I hope that they're going to do really well. Yeah. Probably now that I've left. <laughs> yeah. So how are you going to take it if they win the championship <sighs> without you? And whilst that you're would there be pre-season. devastating because I've not pre-season. even played in one. <laughs> you were pre-season and yeah. you left and then you I'd probably winning. cry. I wouldn't go to the game. No. <laughs> <laughs> no that's rough. <laughs> no, I'd be there for sure. Yeah. But um, I-, I hope they do. They've got a really, really good team. Let's go from SBL to NBL 1. What are some like major changes you've seen from the SBL competition and then as it went to the NBL 1 competition? Again, the social media side and the – it's just everywhere. Mm-hmm. KO. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Joel? Yeah, like what Del was saying, I guess the professionalism. I think the coaches have always done everything they possibly could with the resources they've got, but every single game now is live streamed and then you can watch it anytime you want. It's just – it's always there online. So, you know, the, the level of study that the coaches can do and the scout and all that stuff's definitely gotten mm-hmm. better. I think uh, COVID changed things a little bit. For, uh, especially for Australian players as well. I think those years where we had the West Coast Classic, I think it was 2020 yep. or 2021, um, you know, some of the local guys that probably deserved to get paid to play started to get paid and I think that sort of carried through even once the imports came back into the fray a couple of years later. So I think that helps and you see there's players coming from over east, there's players coming from New Zealand, you know, obviously the Americans that come in, we're getting European players. There's, there's definitely a broader scope. 